Hey guys, Sharpen here. In this video I'm going to show you how to make virtual rights code stacks. They sound something like this. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create these code stacks by splitting them into a couple of different elements like the chords, the bass, the lead and the arp. And I'm going to show you how to create these patches in both uh, MassiveX and Serum. But before we start with MassiveX, I wanted to show you the MIDI for our chords. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot of notes. Uh, you're aiming for at least um, four notes uh, for your chords so that you get something that is pretty wide and big. And then you want to take the bass note and put it an octave below as well to create a really thick chord stack. And generally, seventh chords will work, but if you don't want the characteristic of the seventh chords or the ninth and such, you can just add an octave or another note from the original chord, an octave above, like C or E, for example. But I like the seventh, so I'm going to keep it that way. And now let's see uh, what's inside Massive X. So this patch is really simple. All we have is a saw wave. Uh, it's on the jitter function and you have it on J1 and on P random and it's just a tiny bit that makes it sound uh, sort of like it's glitching in pitch here's how it would sound normally and here's with jitter so just a tiny bit makes it sound really interesting and then I've also added some white noise just a tiny bit and that way, uh, once you add some unison at two voices or more, you get a pretty wide sound. Uh, if you want to keep it really dry, you can keep it at one voice. And that way it will sound really dry and centered, but uh, usually unis unison works best for this type of chord stacks. So try to add at least another voice. Now let's go into our bass. So here's our bass. Um, basically, it's a triangle wave, an octave below. It's also using a tiny bit of jitter as well to make it sound a bit more interesting. And the main thing here is adding some white noise uh, and then low passing it. Um, that way you get a sound that's fairly dark. Let me show you. And then we're bringing back uh, all of the lost frequencies using distortion. So a lot of the drive, but the mix is at around like 55%. And then uh, NLL, which is another uh, distortion effect. And as you can see, all of the distortion makes it sound a bit more interesting. And the more white noise you add, you can get different results. Slightly more messy results even. And if you want, you can uh, go to the routing and for example, uh, make, make it so that the white noise is not going through the filter. That way you're going to get a more uh, high, high, con high frequency content sound. But I like it being low passed, so I'm going to bring it back to the distortion uh, before the filter. And then there's some EQ that's just giving some low gain to make it, well, more bassy. And then together with the chord stack, you already get a really big sound. And then we have our lead. So there are a lot of ways to make a lead. Um, the most common practice is just taking uh, a saw wave and adding some unison uh, or chorus to get some voices. In this case, I've chosen to go for a bit of a different sound. It's a saw wave that has LFO4 modulating the pitch by a tiny bit to create some vibrato. And then we have uh, some distortion. The drive is fairly low. Uh, some white noise and a lot of distortion here. And reverb on 100% wet with a really small size. So you get a very roomy reverb. And if I were to disable the reverb and all of the distortion, it would sound really simple like this. Just some unison and some white noise. And then once you add the distortion and you add uh, the reverb, you get a really interesting sound. And the most important thing with your lead is to uh, use a lot of pitch bend. It makes it sound a lot more interesting when you pair it with chord stacks. So here's a, 
an example of a melody that I played on a MIDI keyboard with a lot of uh, pitch bending. And then we have the ARP, so the ARP is fairly simple as well. We have just a sine wave here. Um, it's being modulated by two envelopes right here. We have envelope number two that is uh, opening up the low pass filter for a very brief amount of time and then closing it back again. We have the delay on a fairly short amount of time and the shape all the way to the left, so that makes the decay really fast, uh, really fast in its curve. And then we have envelope number three, which is an even shorter envelope that all it does is it pitch shifts or oscillator two octaves above. That creates a nice click. And if you mess with the ratio, you get a click instead of like this weird mess. So at around here, it should sound good. And then we add in some bit crushing to create uh, that white noise. And you need to make sure that your crush is all the way to the right, because if it's on the left side, it's going to sound a lot weirder, sort of like a saw wave. So all the way to the right, and the mix just makes it uh, more white noise-ish or less. So that depends on your personal taste. And then you have some delay here uh, on a quarter note and on an eighth note. The mix is, uh, is around like 40% wet. And then we have some dimension expanding. And then once you put in uh, the MIDI for our uh, chord stack, get a really nice arc. And the delay is filling in the empty spaces in between the bass and the uh, chords. So that makes it uh, a really nice addition to your chord stack. And then all together with your lead, you get something like this. And I'm going to show you how to make these in Serum. So in Serum, it's a fairly simple process. And basically what you want to do is to just mimic the judo function. And in order to do that, just enable uh, the noise oscillator on a certain volume. And you want to go to the matrix and click on noise oscillator for your source of the modulation and you want it to modulate uh, oscillator A or B uh, and you want it to modulate the chorus pitch by a tiny bit and that is going to create uh, this sort of jitter uh, pitch function. Then in addition to that I've added an LFO that is modulating the fine pitch uh, or fine tuning of A and B to create some vibrato as well. And that way you get uh, the chord stack sound that we've heard in Massive X. Uh, it can also be used as an additional lead on top. That is how Virtual Riot usually uses that, like this. And on its own it sounds like this. You can obviously add some reverb and make it sound even more interesting. But if you're looking for a sound that really replicates the chord stack, then you probably want to dial down on the vibrato. So just dial down on uh, the output of the LFO1 that is modulating uh, the fine tuning of both oscillators and, uh, on the and on the noise oscillator as well to make it a bit less jittery. And all you need to do is to just remove the octave above that I've put here for the lead sound. We can even remove that and just use one oscillator. And then bring back uh, the pitch modulation uh, to your taste. Something like this sounds good in my opinion, and then we can add some unison. And then with the bass, it should sound very similar to the chord stack in Massive X. Now if you're looking to create uh, the bass in Serum, it's also a fairly simple process. Uh, all you need is to go to analog, basic shapes, and into a square wave. And then let's put it an octave down, add some noise, let's add some white noise. And then all you need to do is to just low pass it. And then uh, just distort it by quite a bit. And since it's serum, you can also add the multiband compression to get an even bigger sound. And 
and that's how you make uh, the base uh, in Serum. Then we have uh, our opson, so that is fairly simple as well. All you need to do is to go to basic shapes for a sine wave, and then create an envelope that just goes uh, from really high to really low in pitch, really fast. So let's do that. Let's create a really fast envelope and a really curved one as well. You want to set it on envelope mode. And then let's go into the matrix and see how much of this modulation we want it to be. Even faster, I think. Something like this should be fine. Let's put in the MIDI for our ARP and set it to ARP function in FL Studio. An octave above even. And then we can change the curve until it sounds good. And we can add um, another uh, set of effects. We can add some uh, delay. And also some dimension expanding as well. And maybe a tiny bit of bit crushing by using the distortion. Uh, we need the down sample function. And there you have uh, the ARP as well. And altogether you should get something that sounds like this. And then if you want you can chop up uh, some vocal chops or even the lead that you made uh, and chop it up instead. And just add uh, some distortion and some uh, room reverb for your uh, lead or vocal chops to make them stand out in a mix a bit more and you have pretty much a complete uh, section in your track. And that is pretty much it. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments below what subject do you want me to cover up next time.